In this video I'm going to be showing you step by step how to prepare a bootable USB drive that you can use to install and run macOS Ventura on a Fujitsu P420 desktop PC. The first step is to download macOS Ventura. You can get this from the Apple App Store or the easiest way is to use the direct link to download it from Apple's content delivery network. You'll find this link down in the video description. Paste the link into your browser address bar, hit enter and then click save. The installer will be saved to your downloads folder. After running the installer you'll find the install macOS Ventura app has appeared in your applications folder. Now you can plug in a USB drive at least 16GB in size and run disk utility. Select your USB drive in the pane on the left and then click erase. Now choose a name for the drive, I'm just going to call mine Ventura. The format should be macOS Extended Journaled and the scheme should be GUID Partition Map. Now click Erase and the drive will be formatted. Now we're going to use Create Install Media to create the bootable USB. Go to this page on Apple's website which will be linked down below and scroll down to Commands. Highlight the text under Ventura and press Command and C to copy it to the clipboard. Now open a new terminal window and press Command and V to paste the text you just copied. Delete the text that says My Volume and replace it with the name you gave your USB drive when you formatted it. In my case Ventura. Now hit enter and you'll be asked for your macOS password. Type your password, hit enter again and you'll be asked if you want to continue. Type Y, then hit enter and Create Install Media will begin to create the bootable USB. This will take a while so just be patient. Once it's finished you'll find that your USB drive has been renamed to install macOS Ventura. Now it's time to prepare our EFI folder. The EFI folder is where the open core bootloader and all of the files and drivers needed to install macOS are stored. To create the folder I'm going to be using Open Core Auxiliary Tools or OCAT for short. Go to the OCAT GitHub page which will be linked down below and click on the releases on the right. This will bring you to the download page for the most recent version. Scroll down and click the link for OCAT underscore Mac dot DMG to save it to your downloads folder. Once downloaded, double click the DMG file to mount it and then drag the icon into your applications folder. Now right click on the OCAT icon, select open and then click open again. Once it runs, click the icon on the top right for configuration templates. A window will open with a link labeled Intel CPU configuration template. Clicking this link brings you to a GitHub page with a set of pre-made config files for various hardware specifications. Click on plist and then scroll down until you see the file for desktop 4th gen Haswell iMac 15,1. Click on the link to open the file, then click the download icon at the top labelled download raw file and then click save. Once it's downloaded, double click on the file to open it in OCAT. Now go to the edit menu and select generate EFI on the desktop. You'll see a message saying finished generating EFI folder on the desktop and you can click OK to close the window. Now we need to make a few changes. First click the NVRAM icon and select the third hexadecimal number down. Since the integrated HD4600 graphics isn't supported in macOS Ventura, we'll need to use OpenCore Legacy Patcher after installation to enable it. And to do this, SIP needs to be disabled. So next to CSR Active Config, change the zeros to EF0F0000. On the line above, next to boot args, add hyphen CDF on. This enables HDMI 2.0. Since I'm using an ultra-wide monitor, I need this flag to get full resolution. But if you're using a standard 1080p monitor, then you may not need this. Then type a space and add ALC ID equals 15. This is the audio layout for the onboard ALC 671 audio on the P420 motherboard. 
finally add amphi get out of my way equals one with the words separated by an underscore. This disables Apple Mobile file integrity, which stops unsigned code from running. Again, this is needed for OpenCore Legacy Patcher to be able to patch the graphics drivers. Now you can just select all the other CSR active config lines and delete them since they're not needed. Next, click on the icon on the left labeled DP. This playlist comes with three pre-made iGPU patches. One for Iris Pro 6200, one for HD 4400 and 4600, and one for HD 4400 and 4600 in headless mode. We only need the second one, so we can delete the top one and the bottom one, then remove the hash symbol from the front of the third one that's left. Next, we need to add a driver for the onboard Ethernet. A look at the datasheet tells us that the Fujitsu P420 comes with onboard Realtek 8001 gigabit Ethernet. So we need to download the RTL 8001 driver from GitHub. I'll link to this page down in the description. Click on the link to download the zip, then open your downloads folder and double click on the zip to decompress it. Open the new folder, then go into release and inside you'll find the kext. Right click on the file and select copy. Then double click the EFI folder on your desktop, go to OC and then Kexts and then right click and select paste item. Now we need to install USB injector to get working USB. After installation you should properly map your USB ports, which you can do using hacking tool or following the open core guide which I'll link to down below. But you can do this after installation. USB injector will get the USB ports working in the meantime. Download the file from the GitHub page which is linked down below, then unzip it and copy it to your OC forward slash kexts folder, just as you did with the Ethernet kext. Now click on the kernel icon in OCAT and check that the new kexts have been detected and added to the list. In my case it's detected the Ethernet kext but not the USB kext. So I add it manually by clicking on the plus symbol, then browsing to the kexts folder, selecting USB inject all and then clicking open. Finally, we have to change our SMBIOS definition. Click on PI on the left to access the platform information. macOS Ventura only works on Macs from 2017 onwards, so iMac 15.1 isn't supported since it's from 2014. Click the arrow next to system product name and select iMac 18,1 or 18,2 in the list. This is the 2017 model, so it will allow Ventura to install without issues. Then click the generate button to generate a serial number. Now we have to make sure that the serial number isn't already in use by another Hackintosh or a real Mac. Highlight the serial number then press command and C to copy it. Then go to checkcoverage.apple.com, paste the serial number into the box, complete the capture and click submit. What you're looking for is a reply like this one, saying we're unable to validate your purchase date. If you see a purchase date, then you'll have to generate a new serial number and try again. And that's it, the FE folder is done and you can click the save icon at the top to save the changes. Now you need to mount the EFI partition of your USB drive. Click the mount ESB icon in OCAT, select your USB drive in the list, then click mount and type your macOS password. Now you can quit open core auxiliary tools and drag the EFI folder from your desktop onto your USB drive. Before finishing, we'll need to copy the open core legacy patcher app onto the USB as well so that we can use it to patch the HD4600 graphics after installation. Go to the OpenCore Legacy Patcher GitHub page which will be linked down below, scroll down to Assets, click OpenCore Patcher GUI app and then click Save to save it to your Downloads folder. Open your Downloads folder and double click on the zip file to decompress it. Then drag the OpenCore Patcher icon over to your USB drive and you can drag the OC Auxiliary Tools icon over too. Now, plug the USB drive into one of the front USB ports, turn on the PC and hit Dell to enter the BIOS. 
Select the Advanced tab, then go to SATA Configuration and make sure that SATA mode is set to AHCI. Next, go down to Graphics Configuration and make sure that Primary Display is set to Auto, Internal Graphics should be enabled, IGD Memory should be 64MB and DVM-T Memory should be set to Max. Finally, go to the Security tab and make sure that Secure Boot is set to Disabled. Now, choose Save Changes and Exit, and when the PC reboots, hit F2 to bring up the boot selection screen, and select USB in the list. This will bring you to the Open Core Boot Picker, and you can select the Install macOS Ventura icon to begin the installation. After a while, you'll see the macOS Recovery screen, with options to restore from Time Machine, Install macOS Ventura, to run Safari, or to run Disk Utility. If you're installing to a new SSD, then you'll have to run Disk Utility first to format your drive and then select Install macOS Ventura. From here on, the installation is exactly as it would be on a real Mac. After a few minutes, you'll see the Select Region screen and you can go through the steps to create a new macOS user account. Once this is done, you'll be in macOS Ventura. But you'll notice that the graphics are very laggy and there's no transparency. Open your USB drive and run Open Core Patcher. In the menu, click Post Install Root Patch and you should find that it says Graphics Intel Haswell under Available Patches for System. Now click on Start Root Patching and click Yes when it asks to relaunch as root. The patching should only take a few seconds. Once it's finished, you can reboot. After rebooting, you'll be back into macOS, this time with full graphics acceleration. Now, all that's left to do is to use OpenCore Auxiliary tools to mount the FE partitions of your USB drive and your SSD, and drag the FE folder over from the USB onto your SSD. Now, you'll be able to boot into macOS without needing the USB inserted. And that's it, you're finished. I hope this video helps. It may seem complicated, but in reality, it probably took less than an hour to get from a blank SSD to a fully working Hackintosh. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.